I want to start this off by saying this entire list is about opinion. So there might be characters who you disagree with, while others you do, and I'm interested in seeing what your list is. Number 5 is Dr. Light, aka Kimio Hoshi. Although she's a part of the New Jersey League in Dark Crisis, but so far she's only had one line, with that being what? After uh, Black Adam asked how old she was. Dr. Light used to be a pretty big character, being brought into comics during the, the Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, crossover. She's one of the very few Japanese characters at DC, and she has a lot of great potential. She's a metahuman with light powers. There's also a line in Heroes in Crisis that she has about how she doesn't know why she carries the name of Dr. Light. Due to the fact that the first Dr. Light, well, technically the second Dr. Light, was Arthur Light. The first one was Jacob Finley, but he died within four issues, so a lot of people just consider Arthur Light the first Dr. Light. Arthur Light is a villain, most known for raping Sue Dibney. And I think there is really a story with the idea of why is Kimio Hoshi named Dr. Light? Why is she deciding to keep that name when the person who, hold, who held it before her was a rapist, a murderer, a child murderer, and etc.? I think there really could be a story about maybe she has some sort of <laughs> that maybe she a little has some problems and doesn't understand who or why she does that. I would maybe consider naming her something else other than Dr. Light because like I said, Arthur Light was a rapist. And I think having a hero with the same name as a rapist can be a very bad idea, which they do kind of they also kind of only like hint at the fact what of what Arthur Lay has done. She doesn't act outright say it, which I think there's a there's a pretty big reason why she doesn't outright say it. It's because if she does, a lot of people are gonna be like, wait, what the hell's wrong with you? Why are you using that name? Which I would agree with. Why is she using that name? And instead of an explanation or attempting to change her name in a storyline that I think could be very very interesting, like maybe name her Miss Light or just Light. Okay, that's just kind of stupid, but I'm not, you know, a writer, so they could probably come up with a better name than Doc, than um, Light or Miss Light, but you know what I'm trying to say. I think there really is a story there. And I really hope that she does stay on the Just League team even after the main Just League team comes back. And I think also some other members of the Justice League team from uh, Dark Crisis I would like to also stick around. Like maybe the Blue Beetles and Booster Gold I think could also be on the team. But in my opinion, Dr. Light Kimio Hoshi is very underrated and has a lot of potential. But due to the fact that no one is using that potential and like writing it and no one is, you know, letting her actually have an actual story... In a way, you're kind of doing like a bit of a character assassination with the fact that she is very well aware of what Arthur Light has done, but yet is okay with carrying his name. And I think you really, really need to fix that. <laughs> because if she's going to continue on just being in cameos as Dr. Light in the same costume as Arthur Light was, you're going to start seeing the fact that maybe <laughs> that is a bad idea. <laughs> Because the first Dr. Light, okay, the second Dr. Light, who I keep referring to as the first Arthur Light, like I said, is a rapist. So I do not think that Kimio Hoshi, who is meant to be a hero, should be continuing the name of Dr. Light. But that's my personal opinion on that. A lot of people, I think, would be okay for just being called Dr. Light. Personally, I think it is um, not the best approach in that they definitely should change her name to maybe just Light or Ms. Light because even despite the fact that he was a criminal beforehand in Christ on Infinite Earths when she came out as Dr. Light I thought that was fine because even though he was a villain she was a hero it wasn't that bad but then and then Identity Crisis came along and Arthur Light was revealed to be a rapist and I don't think that Kim Yohoshi then should be okay with carrying that name then. Like, she has no relation with Arthur Light in any capacity, so why is she content on carrying the name of Dr. Light? So, it's really just interesting to me that I think there is a lot that could be done there 
that may in a story that might end with her changing her changing her name to something else. But instead, she's always just, you know, put down as a cameo appearance. Which I think is, in my opinion, not enough for her character. But yet again, that's just my opinion. Someone, if you think that she just finds being Dr. Light and just appearing in cameos, then that is completely your uh, opinion and you're valid to that. Just mine is, I think the character should go through a change and maybe get her own storyline because... It's Rebirth started it. She's only appeared in 16 issues. Half, not even half, almost every single one with a cameo. And she's only ever had two lines. The one from Heroes in Crisis and the one from Dark Crisis. So, yeah. And one of her lines was what? <laughs> well, I tell you look at the three lines because she was one of the characters saying welcome to the new Justice League with the others. But that was an ensemble of people saying it. So I don't count that as one of her two lines. That's or third line. Anyways, on to number four. Four is Fire, a character who usually is paired up with Ice these days. And not saying that she not she has always been paired with Ice, who in my opinion isn't a bad character. But nowadays she's always always paired up with Ice, and it's always a cameo role, which is ironic because it isn't both ways. Ice has appeared on a Young Justice with Fire and had a relationship with Guy Gardner which prompted her to appear more than Fire did. Meanwhile, my answer episode on Powerless, Fire is never seen without Ice for the past couple of years. But fun fact, Fire was a character of her own for a decade before Ice came around. Well, she was shown solo on Batman Brave and the Bold, too. I think Fire has a very stunning power set, and something could really be done with it, along with her Brazilian heritage. I'm not saying maybe she should join the main Just League team, but there's a lot of offshoot Just League teams that I think she could very much join. Although not a lot of them are, you know, at the moment ongoing. And there's also Just League Dark, which isn't necessarily an ongoing thing right now, but it's constantly being brought back. So it's clear that's not going away anytime soon. But Fire, I do not think would fit on Just League Dark because I don't think that makes any sense. <laughs> But maybe she'd be thrown into the Flash comic like Mr. Terrific did. She is a metahuman with fire powers. They're, that could work. Although the Flash comic right now is pretty um, is pretty stuffed. And they are doing a very good job of holding and juggling a bunch of characters. And throwing another one in I think could just make it all fall to the ground. So that could be a bad idea. But I really do think Fire needs to become her own character again. Or maybe have her develop with Ice. I'm not saying get rid of her and Ice's friendship. Because it is very strong as a big part of their characters. But don't make it define Fire's character. Because it clearly doesn't define Ice's character. So why does it define Fire's? Personally, I always found it really weird that Ice nowadays is a character who is seen as being the bigger of the two. Because Fire used to be the bigger of the two. She appeared 10 years before Ice did. She also was a pretty big character and the most appeared female character on Batman Brave and the Bold from the 2008 cartoon. So it is very shocking to me that Fire has become the sidekick to Ice practically. Which is always something I think kind of hurt, which I think is kind of hurting her character. The two are meant to be partners. For example, just the Unlimited, weirdly enough, is also vice versa. Fire is the lead female character, not the lead female character. That is incorrect. It's Wonder Woman's lead female character in Hawkgirl. I meant Fire is the is actually given lines and has a big role in certain episodes. Well, Ice is only a cameo character, which is unfortunate. But I think between the two, Fire is definitely has most potential. But I'm not saying get rid of Ice. I'm saying the two of them can be both be equals instead of just have Fire be just known as Ice's best friend. Because in reality, Fire has been around a lot longer than Ice. Yet, Ice kind of overshadows her. Although, this could also be said with the same thing with Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn. Poison Ivy's been around a lot longer than Harley Quinn, but Harley Quinn, a lot of the time, overshadows her. Which could be a similar situation. Although, Ice and Fire seem to be just friends, so Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn go from lovers to friends to friends with benefits. And so, that could be. So, it's kind of different. But, just in my opinion, I think Fire needs more. How do I say? I want to say screen time, but that is not the right word. But like have a more pre have more of a presence in comics because she doesn't really do much anymore, which is unfortunate.
Ripley's Black Lightning, a character I cannot believe hasn't been used more as of late. After his time on the recent Outsider comic, a comic I actually really liked, but it was more about Signal and Cassandra, two characters I also really, really like. Black Lightning, since then, has been stuck to cameos. He's had a lot of small miniseries since his character was introduced. All have had, you know, has had a bit of a mixed reaction, I would say, but I think the good in those comics are really good and has shown that just what a story about him could be. Not only him, but his daughters, Lightning Thunder, who the New 52 tried to completely erase. Luckily, they're kind of back. They should have been decided, and they're actually his daughters, which is meant to be a parody of the main universe, meaning they're his daughters again. They did show up in, um, I think, a Justice League comic, but I don't remember which one. <laughs> I think he gen could genuinely give his own solo series. DC seems to be experimenting as of late, with series focusing on the Joker, Poison Ivy, Black Manta, and Yara Floor. Why not give Black Lightning like a six issue miniseries at least? Or maybe a 12? Or for the hell of it, why not an ongoing one? I think he could handle an ongoing series. He did have a show on the CW, which in my opinion was actually probably the best CW Arrowverse show. Well, other than Superman and Lois Lane. Oh, and maybe Arrow. But Black Lightning, the Black Lightning show was actually really good, and he's usually seen as cringy or stuff like that along with the other ever shows but i would say that black lightning show is surprisingly a lot better than you expect but because of the trailers and always always underperforming and for some unknown reason deciding to use archive chill, um footage over and over again makes the show come across as either being cringy or non-existent because a lot of people didn't know that show existed until it ended which is unfortunate because it was actually pretty good. Black Lightning as a character doesn't have doesn't have the same whole uh, the whole like um, how do I say he is not a, exactly the type because he's a street character who he's, he's like a street fighter. But unlike a lot of those street characters, Black Lightning has a lot of um, how do I say like morality. He's very, very big in morality when it comes to not killing, but when it comes to what he stands for. And I think that's very, very like honorable as character. And it really shows something with him. The reason why I say point that out is because a lot of times street characters, other than Batman, of course, are usually shown as being anti-hero. So Black Lightning is a straight-up hero, not an anti-hero. He is a hero through and through. His powers are also can be visually stunning, depending on the artist, of course. Sometimes I think it looks a little crappy. <laughs> That's not really, that's not hate, by the way, it's just my taste. But Black Lightning's powers can also be extremely stunning. There's also a lot of storylines that could be done with his ex-wife, Lynn, and his children, Jen and Anissa. Maybe bring back Grace from the Outsiders comic from the early 2000s, even, who was Anissa's girlfriend. I really do think there's a lot with Black Man, Black Lightning that could be done. In the, For example, they attempt to do something in the New 52 with him in Blue Devil. Why Blue Devil? <laughs> I never understood why they attempted to pair Black Lightning and Blue Devil together. They have nothing in common. <laughs> Blue Devil Daniel Cassidy is an actor who played a character named Blue Devil before becoming an actual Blue Devil and is a magical type being. He's literally a devil. Black Lightning is a street hero at night and a s school teacher at day who helps the community out. So how are, why were the two of them paired together? They do not match. In any capacity, they did not match. And I'm really glad that they're no longer trying to pair them together. But I do think Black Lightning generally could get his own series. Or maybe just throw him on the Justice League team, at least. He definitely could hold his own against... Not against, but hold his own with characters such as the likes of Hawk Girl and Green Arrow. Or, in my opinion, he could. Uh, but that's my opinion on Black Lightning. Because I know there's a lot of people, for some reason who say that he is a Static Shock ripoff, which is incredibly incorrect. Black Lightning came out before Static Shock. But when I saw the Black Lightning trailer for Black Lightning, I looked at the comment section, and a lot of people thought he was either an original character or a Static Shock ripoff, which I could not believe so many people didn't know Black Lightning existed until the first season trailer came out. And then after that season came out, no one knew the show existed because CW, for some unknown reason, never, ever, and I mean 
ever. I actually posted another trailer that wasn't archive show, um, footage, which ever got actual attention. It was a really, weir really weird business decision of the CW to do. But either way, I think Black Lightning has a lot of potential, and I think uh, also <laughs> um, that needs more respect as a lot of people seemingly just think he's Static Shock Light, which is ironic because I always thought Static Shock was Black Lightning Light. <laughs> but this is my take on Black Lightning. What's yours? Who is Vixen, another character who I think deserves her own series, or at least a miniseries. Which she does have, kind of. That being a webtoon series, which isn't bad in my opinion, but it's not mainstream Vixen. There's so much about Vixen that you could explore when it comes to her mainstream uh, family totem. She talked briefly in Dark Crisis where she's just taking on a Robin Hood type character in Africa, which I think could be an extremely interesting and compelling storyline for Vixen. Like, a literal comic book can like be based on that. But yet again, it was just one panel, and it wasn't even a whole panel. It was a tiny little box to show us that, show us when jo who John is trying to recruit, and all we see is a tiny panel of Vixen in Africa um, helping people. That's all we get of that storyline, which is wasted potential in my opinion, and I think it genuinely could be a great comic book series on its own, which hopefully we could get, but something seem doesn't seem like we will. And that's really it for her at the moment. She hasn't really been doing much. She's always been in cameos. She was in the Justice League of America, led by Batman 2017. Another series I really liked. It shows her having a fight with Roxy Rocket, which I really liked. There was a whole thing about Killer Frost needing the whole um, uh, cure for her power because, you know, she was killing people. That was really funny. Not funny, but you know, it was funny to me that Killer Frost couldn't control the fact she was still killing people. I mean, she wasn't still killing people, but you know what I mean. How they were trying to find a cure so they didn't have to kill people. And, but that series is more about Batman and Killer Frost. Understandably so. But Vixen, in my opinion, genuinely could be part of the Manchester League team as well. Yet again, I'm also just naming off all these characters saying that to be part of the Manchester League team. To the point where I don't think any of them ever will. Well, I wouldn't say that. I think Vixen could eventually be a part of the team again. She used to be a big member of the team before Flashpoint, but then Flashpoint happened and she kind of vanished and then came back a couple times in a very small role. I think she had her own Magnificent two comic, but I could be wrong about that. If I'm wrong, then please comment down below. Vixen, in my opinion, also hasn't had the best appearance and adaptations. For example, in Batman Brave and the Bold, she was just the wannabe's girlfriend. Although I really enjoyed her character in Justice League Unlimited. But yet again, she's usually tied in a romantic plot. Not anything against a romantic plot, because I really liked her um, character on Justice League Unlimited with uh, Shaira and John. It's just that we didn't get to see really a lot about her origin. Which makes sense, because there are a lot of Justice League members, and we have to, you know, keep the ball rolling on the show. So I'm not, that's not any hate to the show, by the way. So Vixen, in my opinion, has a lot of great potential, but is kind of not seen as an actual character sometimes, I feel like. She usually is being dubbed a cameo, or someone to fill up the ranks, which I think kind of belittles her character. For example, her being on the League of America felt really much like her filling up the ranks. Same thing with Ray and Black Canary. Because on that team, she didn't really do much. I mean, she had some really cool fight scenes, which I really liked. But she didn't do much well on the team. So I really do think Vixen can be a lot more. For example, her Webtoon comic, which, like I said, isn't bad, has actually been exploring the whole idea of her um, family history. Which, although it's not mainstream, i actually been enjoying it a lot more than I thought it would. And I think I would really like to see a storyline, not that one, of course, exactly. But something to, uh, how do I say, among the lines of that storyline... In mainstream comics. But that's just my opinion on that. Number one is my favorite DC character of all time. And that is Ryan Choi aka The Atom. A character who was killed by Deathstroke before Flashpoint. Something that made me really really mad. Because the reason why they killed Ryan. Was because they wanted to show um, how cool Deathstroke was. Yes Deathstroke is very very cool. No one is going to say no to that. But you don't have to have him kill one of your very very few Asian characters off. 
to show off he's cool and show, kill off a character who is so compelling, so filled with development and has so much potential and was really getting to become a very intriguing person in as a character just so you could kill them by having Deathstroke stab him in the back and have him unceremoniously die alone. Like, seriously, why? Luckily, he would come back, but we're going to get to that later. This is before he dies, we're going to talk about it. He had a solo series pre-Flashpoint, which was, in my opinion, amazing. He used to have flaws, but I still loved it. Either it be he fought a time-traveling villain such as Kronos or metahumans like Dwarf Star. He also had a relationship with Giganta. I thought this was very different from a normal hero and villain relationships. Because Giganta didn't want to be redeemed, but she still loved Ryan. And Ryan didn't want to be a villain, of course, because Ryan was a superhero. But he still loved Giganta. This relationship, I think, really, really made these characters really pop. Because unlike most hero and villain relationships, they weren't going to swap sides and changed their entire life for someone they loved. But they still loved each other, and it was more realistic, in my opinion. Because if you're, like, on soccer teams, I would say, if one of you is on the red team and one of you is on the blue team, and the blue team member loves someone on the red team, you're still going to play ball with each other. You're going to be a bit upset when you're, you know, if you end up accidentally, like, you know, I don't know, like, tackling each other. <laughs> People don't tackle each other in soccer, do they? <laughs> this You understand what I'm trying to say, though, I assume. So, in my opinion, I think Ryan and Giganta are a more realistic take on the hero-villain relationship. Which is something I think could have been ageless. But it wasn't, unfortunately. It was very brief because Ryan died. But after Ryan died, Giganta was told by Amanda Waller what Dwarf Star did. And while I mentioned, while Dwarf Star and G uh, Giganta were on the Suicide Squad team... Giganta confronts Dwarf Star, crushes him against the wall, practically <laughs> attempts to murder him, but unfortunately doesn't end up dying because she not only put him into a coma, which is weird to me because why does DC not care enough for Ryan to keep him alive? But Dwarf Star, a character no one knows, they decide to keep around. <laughs> like, what would that been the harm if Giganta killed Dwarf Star right there? Sorry, I'm... He was very, very salty over the fact Ryan died. Luckily, he came back after uh, Flashpoint. He, and yay, Flashpoint did something right, other than Core of Owls. And who had a very com compelling, re and during his time after Flashpoint, uh, he didn't do much. He appeared here and there, a couple series. He didn't do m much, but the thing that he did do, I would say, he did come across as himself, which I did like, because sometimes between New 52 and pre-New 52, or pre-Flashpoint and post-Flashpoint, characters would feel very, very, very different. Just look at Black Canary. Black Canary went from being the leader of the Birds of Prey to being a singer in a pop band called Ashes on Sunday. <laughs> and Batgirl went from a well, Barbara Gordon went from Oracle, a highly intelligent um, woman who helped lead the Birds of Prey team, to a selfie-taking teenage girl. So Ryan, in my opinion, definitely stayed at least adjacent to who he was before Flashpoint. His best story was when he had was a part of the Justice League of America. He had a very compelling relationship with uh, Killer Frost, although... Not as compelling as a relationship with Giganta. I would prefer that over his relationship with Killer Frost. In my opinion, Killer Frost and Ryan Choi just came off of like a safe choice to put them together. Even though maybe that's not their intention, they meant to be more than that. But it did not, in my opinion, feel as interesting as the hero-villain dynamic as Ryan and Giganta. Although, I do find it funny that his two biggest relationships are both with villains. And they're not even his villains. <laughs> It's a Wonder Woman villain and a Flash villain. Although this time Killer Frost was actually trying to be redeemed, which I think also made it less inter interesting. And Killer Frost is usually paired with Firestorm and is his Catwoman. <laughs> but I'm not hating on it, by the way. It just wasn't as interesting to me. And no offense to Ray Palmer fans or Al Brat fans, but Ryan Choi is definitely my favorite Adam. 
And he also was going to be in the Snyderverse, which also got um, cut. Oh. He was also in the Arrowverse, where he, um, yeah, he was it. He was in it for sure. It was he was in it. <laughs> and all jokes aside, I think he was meant to have a bigger role. But uh, the Arrowverse kind of ended recently, or it's going to end with the flat final season of the Flash. Therefore, his character never really took off as I think they intended, which is unfortunate because that may, means two Ryan Choi's who both kind of got the short end of the stick. And that's it for this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.